Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today we're doing a classic album song ranking of 1971's Madman Across the Water. Elton John. Hold it up. Bang. Great album. Got my book. <laughs> Everybody's got it. Awesome. Uh, fourth studio album, sixth overall. He has a soundtrack and a live album in the early years. Went to number eight in the U.S. charts. Uh, Elton, truly one of the treasures of the 1970s music-wise. I mean, everything he touched was gold. Uh, part of that singer-songwriter movement. A little different, though, because he had a lyricist. He didn't write his own lyrics, where all these other uh, big artists that came out during that time all wrote their own songs. Uh, lyrically, I'm talking James Taylor, Carly Simon, Carol King, Cat Stevens, Jackson Brown, all, all the way down the line, as varied as David Bowie, Van Morrison, Joni Mitchell. They all did their own lyrics, but Elton stood out. He did the music, Bernie brought the lyrics, and they worked this magic together. It's unbelievable how it works so well. Uh, quite unusual, but brilliant nonetheless. Um, this is more of that Americana stuff that he had introduced us to with Tumbleweed Connection, which is a little more folky than this. This has a little high level proggy stuff as far as I'm concerned with the, uh, orchest the orchestrated uh, string arrangements and real ambitious album, more complicated than Tumbleweed, but uh, a great one nonetheless. I, I love the storytelling on many of these songs, Elton with that soulful gospel voice that he brings anyway. Great to be here with Sam St. John, my usual partner, and our special guest, Randall Nelson, who big Elton John fan, and I know Tumbleweed, uh, or <laughs> Madman Across the Water is one of the first albums he ever owned, so great to have yeah. Randy in on this one. Guys, how's it going? Great to be here. Thanks. Yep. Happy to have Randy with us for the yeah. second time. Second time around for Randy, always a pleasure, and... Uh, this was a tough ranking. I know I, we chatted earlier on the uh, the messaging and so forth, and Sam had a tough time whether he loves the album. And uh, give us a little intro, Sam, on your background with the album and how you come to love it. Yeah, this album, um, I really got into the, the the meat and potatoes of the album in college because I had my best friend, he's still my best friend, his name is Chris, and um, we went to school. I met him in college, and me and him always bonded over music. We loved Pet Sounds. We loved um, some Tom Petty deep cuts. And he's just an all around music guy. And we always talked about the song Leave On. And that was one of those songs that we bonded over and just about, you know, the, the greatness of Elton John. And we always would joke to people, you know, that would compare Elton John to Billy Joel, how Elton John, we, we were pro, we were team Elton John, <laughs> um, comparing the two piano guys in the 70s. Yeah, and we got we actually got to see Elton John, which I know um, y'all have because y'all did a video with with Larry um, several months ago. But I got to see Elton uh, in twenty sixteen, early twenty sixteen, like spring of my senior year of college, and um, it was a great show. He was fighting the flu, and but you wouldn't have known it other than when he talked, you could hear he was congested. But when he sang, he was fine. And it was just so cool to hear leave on, you know, with Chris and another friend of ours who was there. There was just such a cool moment. And um, I'm also fortunate enough that I get to see Elton uh, later this summer in September. But then, you know, once listening to leave on and Chris would start talking about some of the other cuts off of this album, I would go back and I, I knew um, just from some one off songs like I knew Madman Across the Water and Indian Sunset. And obviously, I mean, obviously, Tiny Dancer is all over the radio, but um, so I started getting into some of those cuts, so to speak, in the album and then um, ended up getting the album, I think, after college. So I've known the full album now for going on six years or so. And um, again, we were showing the album earlier and I, I just got the box set. This is the booklet from the box set, which I haven't started reading yet, but I've listened to all the music demos and and live performances for the bbc and the old gray whistle test and yep. it's just it's just great it, it it sounds great with just elton on piano it sounds great with the orchestration and um it's right. my favorite elton album by by a long shot and i know randy has similar thoughts as well go ahead randy tell us about your thoughts well like you said it was one of the first albums i got i was 
I was part of a thing called the Record Club of America when I was an early teenager. And they would they must have sent you an album because I don't think I would pick out like Randy Newman's Good Old Boys right. and Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits were two of the first ones I got, plus Elton John, Madman Across the Water. And so, of course, when you're when you only have a few albums, you really get to know these albums. So mm -hmm. I played this album a ton and knew it, you know, backwards and forwards. And it just became my favorite Elton John album. I got to, I think, Tumbleweed Connection next was the next album I got from him. And then I got those greatest hits. Yeah. And I don't think I bought another Elton John album until the CD era came. And then I started buying some of the. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had them all growing up this, uh, from Tumbleweed through Captain Fantastic. And then I got off the Elton John bandwagon after 75. I thought it, his quality went a little bit downhill for my taste. So there's about six or seven in there that in a row, including uh, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player and Honky Chateau and Goodbye. Captain Yellow Fantastic. Captain, mm -hmm. all, all of those albums I have on vinyl and... Uh, they're all they all have outstanding songs on them and pretty deep as well so i would say one of probably i would say probably the most prolific artist of the 70s i can't argue with it yeah i mean i mean you had guys i mean obviously you had great output from like the eagles and, and jackson brown and, and yeah. um you know even billy joel i mentioned earlier but but elton was just pounding out you know a couple albums in less than a year and they were you know, masterpieces yeah. of albums. I mean, he puts out a double album like Yellow Brick Road. He puts out an album like this, like Madman, Captain Fantastic. And it's all, you know, and just this, and his band is also changing over time. I yeah. mean, he goes from having like Caleb Quay and then he he jumps over to having um, Nigel Olsen on drums. He has Davy Johnston, D. Murray that, you know, become the Elton John band. It's He, he was just really on a, on a roll. And, and Bernie Toppin, you know, to talk about him for a minute. Yeah, Elton was kind of taken from the like the Brian Wilson camp, and that you know Wilson would write all of these like symphonic background um, musical scores, just like Elton would. I mean, the music is beautiful without the the lyrics, and then you have Bernie writing these avant-garde, proggy, yeah. psychedelic yeah. lyrics, and I mean it's it's just a match made in heaven. I it mean, they're, they're they're a perfect pair. I, it, it astounds me how he can how they were able to make that formula work really you're putting something it was, it was it was because of a, a newspaper ad <laughs> yeah yeah you're so. taking somebody else's thoughts and stuff and and converting them into these songs i, I don't know how anybody could do that i really don't do you believe what elton's singing too i mean he didn't write yeah. the lyrics but like you're like oh he, he's lived this i mean he he's i know you know songs like on here like you know like indian sunset you think that he was you know out in the west and <laughs> it was bernie Toppin writing it so well he's got the voice to match the content of the songs uh, yeah, Even just, on, on a song like rotten peaches with the you know the prison theme and this and that all those songs work yeah and you talk about how prolific he was but they i guess usually he said they had like 25 songs and they narrowed it down this one they basically had the song these songs and there wasn't a, as many to narrow down. They said they didn't try to do that again. And, you know, they always wanted to go in the studio with more content available. Yeah. All right. We're going to get into the, uh, the gist of the album here. It's pretty short as far as the number of songs. Nine songs we're ranking. And as we usually do, we'll do our uh, nine down to one. Randy will go first, then Sam and myself. And at the end, we'll have an overall score for the album. Uh, this is our 12th in our series so if you haven't seen the first 11 there will be links below to go check them out we appreciate that leave us comments leave us your uh, ranked elton john songs as well but let's cut into it right now randy what what do you have at number nine well at number nine i have the shortest song on the album it's also the last song on the album it's goodbye it's only a minute 49 it's kind of stripped down it's just got elton at the piano and some strings that are that are added on and at the end, he says, like, I'm sorry I took your time. I am a poem that doesn't rhyme. It's it's almost like, thanks for listening to the album. This is mm -hmm. the last song. Goodbye. And it's a little it's a little slight, I guess, but uh, it's a good song. But I have it on number nine. Very good. Yeah, it's uh, it's my number nine as well. 
Um, and that, that line that you just said is, I was trying to figure out like if I wanted this song at number nine, I had it, I think I had it all the way down to seven at one point. Um, but that's just, that's just, that's a very sad line. The way he sings it, he, you know, at the end, he just says, you know, I'll waste away. He just keeps repeating it. Um, and you can hear he's kind of like a quiver in his voice. And again, it goes back to that believability of Elton's singing. I mean, he's a, he's an actor, I mean, singing these lyrics. And it's just, it's a beautiful song. It's, I love the piano in it. I love the whole repetition at the end. Um, just a beautiful song. It's a great, great closer. One of the best closing songs on any album. Yeah, I, I really like it a lot. It's going to be quite higher on my list, believe it or not. I like sad songs, especially when they end an album. And I, I know it's yeah. brief. I, it's very brief, minute and 30, whatever. Uh, I'll talk about it when I get to it, but it's, pre it's pretty high on my list. Yeah, it harkens back to kind of like like a Carol I Know on Pet Sounds, which is yeah. that album, a sad yeah. song. I, lo I love that too. Uh, you guys aren't going to like me for my number nine, but I'm diving in anyway. It's Razor Face is my number nine. Uh, I don't know. It's just kind of a, the subject matter. You got a homeless alcoholic war vet kind of down on his luck. Uh, kind of a bluesy vocal here by Elton. More bluesy than most of the album for me. A lot of it's more gospel and uh, soulful. Uh, there's an accordion in here that works well. I like the accordion use and some electric little noodling that works. But I, it's never one that stuck with me as one of his better songs. I know a lot of hardcore Elton John fans really love this song, but I, I have to put it at number nine, to be honest with myself. So that's where it's going to fall. Wow. Well, my number eight might be a little surprising, too. <laughs> and that's going to be the leadoff track on side two, which is Indian Sunset. It's kind of a story song about an Indian warrior looking, you know, at, at a, a culture that's coming to an end and he doesn't want to conform. Uh, he wants he wants to go away from everyone else, take a squaw and as a child and just go out somewhere. He doesn't want to be confined to the reservation. Mm -hmm. And he's very uh, diligent and, you know, I'm not going to surrender kind of thing. And it's, I don't think the song is as melodic as some of the other songs on there and I guess the history buff in me knocks it off a few points because he talks about Geronimo when he was surrendered and you know being shot down and that's not what happened uh, Geronimo died in at Fort Sill Oklahoma of uh, pneumonia at 79 so that maybe that I don't know if that's what really put the song down a little bit as the history buff in me but you know I got it at number eight even though I think it's a really good song yeah that's kind of that's that's kind of me with um like the night they drove old Dixie down where they sit, talk about you know Stoneman's cavalry came after Richmond had fell and yeah there's there's some there's some historical inaccuracies there too so I, I understand the reasoning that Randy has mm -hmm. um all right before again Rich was talking about that we were kind of talking off camera texting and things before this video and he said he was kind of gonna guess my uh my bottom two well number eight for me is the leadoff single tiny dancer um it's just one of those songs that it's on that short list of songs that i don't want to hear ever again as long as i live <laughs> um <laughs> and, and, and and you know you've heard all the jokes you know tony danza like hold me closer tony danza and all that stuff that you've heard a million times um it's a beautiful song um you know but you know the blue jean lady and it kind of harkens back to the, you know, why they have the mm -hmm. covers the way it is. And it's cool because I've, I've read in this, um, some, and some of like the pictures in this uh, book that, you know, this was a jacket that was embroidered, you know, a denim jacket. And then Elton essentially bought the, the, the items that made this album and he made them into a, into a pillow for his couch. And it still exists. Somebody bought it at auction for, way too much money but um it's it's a great song you know it, it, you know it seems just for the band you know a lady costume designer um it's a beautiful it's a beautiful song and it's one that he plays every night that he performs live i'm gonna i know i'm gonna hear it in september i heard it 
you know, six years ago um, in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um, it's a beautiful song, but the only, really the only reason it's down so low is because it's so overdone for me. And I was basing my ranking on this particular album on how I want to hear the album right now. And again, I'm full on into the box set, studying it, listening to it and everything. And Tiny Dancer is not one that I want to hear. I want to hear other selections from this era. So number eight. Well, I was wrong. I had it. I thought you'd pick it at number nine, actually. Because of, it, you know. At one time it was, but I had to kind of weigh it out with goodbye. And I was like, eh, well, I can't really do it. But uh, I knew it would be near the bottom because of the over. <laughs> uh, my number eight is the same as Randy's, actually, Indian Sunset. And for exactly the same reasons that he mentioned. I, I love the descriptive nature of it. It's very detailed, the plight of the Native Americans, but the historical inaccuracies knock it down a few pegs. It does remind me a lot of the night they drove old Dixie down, although I like that song better. Uh, it's dramatic. It builds sort of the narrative and then it, the music comes into it. So for the reason that uh, Randy mentioned about Geronimo, I had to uh, put it at number eight, although it's, it is a, a great song. If you don't know anything about history and you just want to listen to the song and hear Elton's voice and the music, excellent. But this is a tough album to rank. You have to put something nine, something eight, and that's what we're doing. So move on. Number seven. Well, my number seven is when you had it. Uh, nine, I think. Uh, razor Face. Uh, kind of about a down and out hobo, alcoholic, or older gentleman. And Razor Face, I, I took it as being unshaven. Uh, I don't know if that's accurate. And I thought maybe unshaven is kind of unspoiled in a way because they do say, I love your razor face. And I think maybe that's why they, they do. It's, uh, it's got some great organ, though, I think by Rick Wakeman. Yeah. And the, I like the accordion in there by Jack Imblo. And but the real part I like the best, I think, is the slide guitar at the end with the crisp bedding. But musically, I really like the song. I don't think it's quite as good, good lyrically as some of the other ones. Right. But that's my number seven. Very good. Sam. Number seven for me is the song All the Nasties. Um, this was one of those first, I remember this one, my, I, I should mention my dad is a huge Elton John fan. Um, him and my aunt growing up, they, up, I, again, up till like the late 70s with like Blue Moves, Caribou, um, you know, Rock of the Westies, they were, they were collecting those albums um up until that point and then they kind of kind of lost track of Elton's career and that sort of like a lot of people did but I remember specifically singing the song all the nasties about you know you know oh my soul how it ends kind of yeah. like the, the big choral arrangement um and then singing you know he took a full-blooded city a full-blooded city boy is now a full-blooded city man and he kind of says main like a, like, he, like he's a country singer <laughs> and it's just one of those songs that it sounds like you know you can hear his influence from American country music but but he's got like that that orchestral um background to it like again you mentioned progginess at the beginning of the video rich and this was just one of those first deep cuts of Elton John's that was stuck in my head that I would sing over and over again and, um it was it was tough I didn't know I was going to put this one so low but Again, with nine songs, it's, it's very difficult, but it's my number seven as of this very moment in time. Yeah, it, it's also my number seven. Uh, there's some hostility in the lyrics. I think he's attacking some of the people, the music critics, maybe. Uh, they criticize behind my back. Maybe I should let them. There's one of the lyrics in here. He's defensive about, I guess, what's being said about him. And I'm not sure, but at that time he was still a closeted gay man he hadn't been outed yet or come out so maybe that's part of it there were rumors i don't know i'm, I'm reading into it what i want but uh, i love the choir part of oh my soul I, I think that really makes the song that second half of the song it's like two and a half minutes long where that's all he's singing is oh my oh, soul it's, it's absolutely uplifting it's kind of healing in a way it seems like you're in church almost uh it's, it's really nice and and it elevates the song for me from probably 
being even lower on the list at eight or nine, it, it makes it at number seven. I, I do like it. And the more I listen to it, the more I like it. It's one of those ones that's gained respect. That Oh My Soul is just in my brain right now because I've been listening to it a lot lately. Yeah. You know, you're, you're thinking about your life and stuff and whatever's bothering and you're just venting a little bit. Oh, my soul. And the whole choir comes in. It's, it's really well done, well orchestrated. So that's my number seven. All right, down to six. My number six is Rotten Peaches. Uh, kind of wonderful piano ballad, kind of a story of a man who is a, a prisoner and he's missing home, but it kind of tells the story of all his life. He's met these people that are kind of rotten peaches, and at the end, he kind of becomes one of them. Uh, rotten peaches rotting in the sun, seems I've seen that devil fruit since the world begun. Mercy, I'm a criminal. Jesus, I'm the one. Rotten peaches rotten in the sun. I love how Elton sings this, the line. Uh, mercy i'm a criminal jesus i'm the one on, the, on that song yeah, yeah. love it uh, but you know that's why i th think i think he he kind of became that rotten peach just like the people that he kind of you know started to hang around the wrong people i would guess you could yeah you could say but uh, i think it's a great song but it was, uh, you got to rank something six yep yeah this is um for number six uh i chose raise your face which y'all both talked about um no, yeah, I'm not going to go into, you know, what it's about. And for me, when I think of Razorface, I think that he's a guy that used to be kind of a, a tough guy. Um, Randy mentioned Unshaven. I'm thinking of a guy that's scarred. That's what I was thinking. Um, and, you know, now Austin he's down his luck. And now he needs a young guy to walk him around when he used to be a tough, a tough guy, like a street tough, a mobster or something like that. <laughs> um you know, it's like, has anybody here seen Razorface? I've heard he's back looking for a place to lay down. Just like he was somebody, now he's essentially nothing, the way that the narrator is, is saying the, the the story of the song. And um, I love the, how Elton goes into that high vocal, you know, needs a young man to walk him around. And um, just one of those great songs. I love hearing him do this live in those er the early 70s um, with Nigel Olsen singing the high harmony on the drums. Nigel Olson was a killer harmony singer. Um, he's still with him, Nigel, and so is um, Davey Johnston. But it, it, it's one of those songs, and I should say that after this point in my ranking for number five down to number one, all of those are number one to me. So, and Raise Your Face was tough. I was like, bro, I'll put Raise Your Face at number six or number five and switch it with number five, but um, I, I picked my top five, so I'll, I'll go from that point when we get there cool my number six is rotten peaches real soulful vocal here uh i like the drums on there as well as the piano they both work in unison together and i i singled out that that line that randy read mercy i'm a criminal jesus i'm the one rotten peaches rotten in the sun he's picking peaches while he's serving time and for in prison or state prison whatever it is uh sort of remorseful and regretful of his life, but uh, good song. I, I like the vocal on this in particular. I'm just, it's probably the last song I listened to before we started today. I just to get my order straight and uh, still still in there right now, but that, that one line, rotten peaches, rotten in the sun. So we're down to the top five. This is where yeah. it gets uh, down and dirty. My number five is when I kind of moved up from my when I what I originally thought as I got to listening to it, and that's all the nasties is my number five. Uh, it's, he's kind of lashing out at the critics. It's kind of his Van Morrison moment, I guess you could say. <laughs> Van Morrison never did that. <laughs> Some thought it was about like you mentioned his closeted sexuality, but. Bernie has said in interviews that that wasn't the case. It was about some of the nasty things some of the critics had, yeah. had said about them. Uh, but I like, but I know the way you want me and the way you publicize, if they could turn their focus off to the image in their eyes. And I think they, they can't, and I was kind of, I'm kind of culprit in that way too, but in that I would like them to write, to do another uh, Madman Across the Water album, and you know, the, the, right, the right, separate ways, and but uh, and I do love the Oh My Soul at the end. It's kind of like 
letting out after you know all the nasties that came out. I mean, he's kind of letting it out, and it's just the right length for an outro as opposed to a certain Beatles song. <laughs> Very good. All right, number five, y'all have, uh, I think y'all both mentioned it, is Rotten Peaches. Um, again, not much more to add to it. Um, I love the end, the whole, you know, na 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 Again, Elton's just um, at the top of his game vocally. Um, yeah. This, this, just this whole era. I mean, Elton is, and this is just before Elton was really getting into the, um, where he was starting to become a characterization of himself. He was still just a piano player, you know, and you would see him live and he was very subdued and, you know, he was dressed normally. He wasn't in outlandish costumes. Um, again, this, this is just kind of like that end of that first era of Elton John, this album. And I, I just, I really love that song, Rotten Peaches. I, I, I love, you know, the whole, you know, mercy on the criminal. Yeah. It, of course, takes you back to the song, um, have mercy on the criminal, which is another Elton John song, which is a much different song, more bluesy. You know, yeah. it was running from the law. So that that phrase was all was all you could tell was in Bernie's head. So those you know bringing back up old themes comes out later on in the career. But yeah, I love it. It again from five to one, uh, it was tough. Very tough. My number five was both of you guys. Number nine, goodbye, the closer. Uh, more stripped down, like you mentioned, than anything else on the album. Very sorrowful, quiet. Um, it's a good way to close the album, I think. It it kind of is is telling them goodbye, and yet it's leaving the door open for what's going to come next in this guy's career. It's it's an interesting transition. I, I just want to read these lyrics here. I am a mirror. I can reflect the moon. I will write songs for you. I'll be your silver spoon. I'm sorry I took your time. I am a poem that doesn't rhyme. Just turn back a page. I'll waste away. I'll waste away. And that's the way it sort of drifts out. I'll waste away. It's like a yeah. lullaby to the listener. It's like, it's, it's very sad and melancholic, but at the same time, a beautiful, beautiful song. And I was surprised it went up so high, but the more I listened to the album, uh, the more I like that song. So I had to put it there. Yeah, that's, that's cool that you put it so so high. Even though it's only a minute and a half, it, it just works beautifully. It wouldn't have worked anywhere else, obviously, except for the last song. Yeah. All right. Number four, right. Randy. My number four is one that when I was younger, I didn't like care for as much, but as I've got older, I like it more and more. And that's Madman Across the Water, the title track. I have it at number four. It's orig originally written for the Tumbleweed Connection, but the, they didn't use it on that album. It's kind of eerie and haunting. It's kind of got a darker tone than the rest of the album, except maybe the lyrics in a Indian sunset. But as far as musically, I think it kind of yeah. has this dark tone. It got this orchestration with these stabbing strings, and it, it kind of relates to the the uh, mental state of the lead character who sounds like he's going insane but it's, it's like it talks in first person and then it talks in third person like like it, he's the one that's going insane but then he talks about the madman across the water yeah so so i don't you know if he's, if that's part of his mental problem too is, is you can't differentiate but uh i do love the the uh music on this one like I said, those stabbing and disjointed yeah, yeah. swings are just cut out like real, real quick and things like that. That's a good way to put it, the stabbing disjointed, because that's exactly what it is. And we want to give props to uh, Paul Buckmaster. He was the arranger of the strings and the orchestration. So, all right, what do you got, Sam, at four? Number four. Uh, if you would have asked me a year ago what my number one song would have been, this would have been it. Um, one of my I mean, it's number four on this list, but it's probably still in my top 10 favorite Elton John songs, which goes to show that like four of my top 10 Elton John best of songs are probably from this album. Mm -hmm. um, number four for me is Levon. Uh, absolutely love it. 
it, it was very difficult to put it this low. <laughs> and again, I was basing my ranking for this particular album on how I was feeling today. Right. And um, again, it was one of those great highlights to hear Elton John sing this live. Even, you know, at, at that point, he was in his early 70s um, or late 60s, I should say. And it was, it's just one of those great songs. That obviously, you think about Lee Von Helm. There's kind of been differing opinions on whether the song was inspired by his name or not. I've I've heard that Lee Von hated the song, um, <laughs> which is funny because, you know, that's not a name that you hear a lot. But it's kind of one of those things, you know, if your name is in a song, you probably don't want to hear it. I've, you know, if your name is, you know, Rita, you probably don't want to hear Lovely Rita or Michelle <laughs> and that, that sort of thing. It's just one of those things, you know, you're sick of it because everybody's like, oh, yeah, I like the song. But um Again, it's, it's kind of a mix of his of history and some, you know, fiction like Alvin Tostig. It's not a real person. Right. Um, but the New York Times did say that God is dead. That was a very famous headline in the New York Times. And again, so it's one of those songs that, you know, they took American culture and and, and ran with it. Just a lot of vignettes. Um, yeah. You know, he, he shall be Levon. He shall be a good man. And I think it's one of those songs, too, that Elton has said that he still doesn't know what it means. He doesn't know what the song is about, um, but he says, you know, when you when you have, you know, all these people singing a song, they all have their own idea of what it's about. Cool. So um, just one of those songs where, you know, the lyrics don't necessarily matter, which is big for me because I'm a big lyric guy. But this one, lyrics don't, it doesn't matter. It's weird how it really doesn't matter. And yet, and it doesn't make a lot of sense. But when it comes on, you can sing every word. <laughs> and oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. And I sing it live. You know, it's like. You know what what are you saying exactly but you, you're just going with the flow it's a great song yeah yep. uh my number four is one that has not been mentioned yet holiday inn i love this song it's like a traveling across uh america with the band i guess a rock star lifestyle the limousines to the hotel the boredom that sets in can't wait to get on stage melodic the great chorus I think this could have fit in on Tumbleweed Connection, too. Uh, I love the mandolin on this song. Fantastic. I think it's Davy Johnston that plays the mandolin. Uh, just some lyrics real quick. Slow down, Joe. I'm a rock and roll man. I've twiddled my thumbs in a dozen odd bands. You ain't seen nothing till you've been in a motel, baby, like the Holiday Inn. And it's just uh, a cool song. And it fits perfectly in the right spot on this album. So that's my number four. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. I can. Uh, I just said little things that your internet connection is unstable. I don't know what that means. No, you're good. But, but uh, my number three is Holiday Inn that you just mentioned. It's kind of a somber look at life on the road. I think a Holiday Inn kind of uh, represents you know, they all kind of look the same. The rooms kind of look the same. That's kind of how, you know, every town kind of looks the same that you're going through. Yeah. And there's a routineness to everything. Like in the lyrics, boredom's a pastime that one soon acquired where you get to the stage where you're not even tired, kicking your heels till the time comes around to pick up your bags and head out of town. Exactly. But I guess in the original lyrics, he made some comments about room service and the TVs never work. Maybe they thought they'd get sued by Holiday Inn. I don't know what they didn't use it. But <laughs> I love that song. It's uh, it's one that's kind of gone, grown in stature for me. Yeah. I agree 100%. Sam, what's your three? But number three for me is going to be uh, Indian Sunsets, which y'all both talked about. One of those gorgeous story songs. Yeah. Um, I love how it starts where it's kind of like this, like, it's like there's no song all of a sudden you hear that kind of that you know it's kind of like a like it kind of warbles into it and then it stops and it's just him acapella you know as i awoke this evening with the smell of wood smoke clinging like the painted cobwebs hanging upon the painted tp it's just the imagery is just so beautiful in the song you know um and then i love obviously you know how he says you know peace to this young warrior comes and then he kind of pauses with a bullet hole and then he holds that note on hole at the end of the orchestra you know it's just 
it's just a, a, a great song. I mean, I, I know what y'all are saying about the, the historical inaccuracies, and I get that, but I like it like I like, um, you know, Dixie Down. It's yeah. similar statue, one of those epic, you know, five or six minute songs. And I think it's one of Elton's most favorite songs to, to sing live, from what I understand. That he says, you know, he'll do it, and even though it's a deeper cut for just the the people that like Elton because of what's on the radio, he says it, it gets standing ovations all over, and it's still one that he he'll, he'll tuck into his set list every now and then. And um, he might, I hope hope he does it in September. I'm, I'm staying away from from set lists for the next few months, but um, yeah, I, I've always loved it. And again, I was like this that song. I was like that song is number one, and then I saw the two that I put after it. Now even leave on before I was like, man, I don't know. That, that, <laughs> I couldn't warn it today for it to be number one, but it has been number one in the past. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. My number three is the title track, Madman Across the Water. Just a haunting, kind of ominous feel to it. Very proggy. Rick Wakeman on organ again. It's, and I like Randy's use of verbiage here, the stabbing, disjointed uh, quality of it. Uh, mental illness, insanity, great lyrics. Uh, just a Hall of Fame vocal performance by by Elton on this one. The arrangements through the roof. It's like the, to me, it's the centerpiece of the album. I know the title track; it's easy to say that, but after you warm up with those hits early on, and here comes Madman across, and it's like, da, 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 da. Uh, you know, it's just that beautiful arrangement, and the lyrics are just obscure in a way and haunting, dark. But uh, a great song for me. Number three. All right. Top two. My number two is Leave On. Uh, kind of got the unique lyrics. Uh, I guess Bernie has said that, uh, that he just liked the name, which is kind of like uh, Leave On, like Jesus <laughs> as, a, as a name. Darn it. Our boy Glenn. That's <laughs> Glenn. Randy. It is Glenn. Glenn, please. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, and it's about a businessman and he's counting his money and you kind of go making car these cartoon balloons. I'm going like, I didn't know that, that you could make that much money with cartoon balloons. I don't know. <laughs> you got Jesus blowing them up all day too. And But uh, I think sometimes his songs are kind of like Michael Stipe's uh, with REM's lyrics and that you just like how they sound and how they work with the song. You don't always know exactly what they, what they mean. Yeah. It's just like how Elton sings them. It's got some gospel tinges almost in this song. I like how it builds up and Elton's never sounded better than when he sings in the chorus, I think on that one. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Number two for Sam. Number two is the title track, Madman Across the Water. Um, again, it's number two, but it's not really. Um, <laughs> they're all, again, the top, really, uh, well, top four, they're all tied for number one. Rotten Peaches is on the on the border there, but uh, yeah, just a beautiful song. And, you know, some people say it might be about, you know, politicians, you know, talking about presidents and yeah. um, people in parliament. It, it, it goes both ways. I know it's been used several times since the 70s. Um, politically in different videos depending on the, the era whether it's in the uk or the united states it's been used several times um to reference a madman across the water um so i think that's kind of kind of neat that it's one of those timeless songs that's still you know being used in a relevant manner um obviously that the, the y'all were talking about like that that shortness of the the orchestra the bow bow no 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 bow it's just very sharp you know there's a boat on the reef with the broken back love and it. i can see it very well and then he i love how he kind of goes you know is it in your conscience like the way he says that line and yeah. it's just it's, it's it just it catches you off guard nothing about the song is predictable and then he really gets into it where he's like another glimpse of the madman across the water just one of those beautiful you know hard-hitting songs and i want to say there's a cover I think there is a cover by um, Brandy Carlisle, the Americana singer. She does it with her band and does a great version of it. So it's cool that it's still in the in the public eye with with 
uh, modern artists, even in like the Americana field. But yeah, number two, but it's really number one. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it does make sense because my number two could be number one. My number two is Levon, like Randy's. Another wonderful song. I like the piano intro. It sort of tinkles a little bit, and then it gets into uh, Levon wears his war wound like a crown. <laughs> Just a cool <laughs> opening line. Uh, the Great cartoon line. balloons are interesting. And in fact, on the lyrics sheet, there's a picture of the son Jesus with the cartoon balloons. And I like this lyric here. Uh, Levon sells cartoon balloons in town. His family business thrives. Jesus blows up balloons all day, sits on the porch swing, watching them fly. And Jesus, he wants to go to Venus, leave Levon far behind, take a balloon and go sailing while Levon, Levon slowly dies. Just melodic, the gospel uh, nature, the choir at the end, ah, the, where they all come in, great harmonies. I like this line too, born a pauper to a pawn on a Christmas day. Just interesting. Uh, one of his best songs, definitely my top 10 Elton songs of all time. Now we're down. I did to wonder if, if when Jesus is blowing these balloons up and letting them fly, how they're making any money off those things. I know. <laughs> they had the secret to success, I guess. You know. <laughs> all right, number one. All right, my number one is Sam's number eight. <laughs> oh, Tiny Dancer. <laughs> A uh, beautiful ballad. I love the piano on this one. Uh, kind of about life on the road. It's about a seamstress, seamstress for the band, which Bernie has said it was, you know, Maxine, which is a picture here. And on in the lyrics in the song, it says, with love to Maxine on here. So, yep. And they, she was the seamstress for the band. Uh, Blue Jean Baby, seamstress for. L.A. Lady, Seamstress for the Band, Pretty-Eyed, Pirate Smile, You're Marry a Music Man, which she did. But I like that Pirate Smile. I thought that was kind of some cool, cool imagery. It's got these magnificent strings. And I think Paul Buckmaster, these orchestral arrangements with the strings just work perfectly with his piano and this song. And I can't remember, Neil Dudgeon, is that the guy's name? What's it? Gus. Gus Dudgeon. Yeah. Well, Neil Dudgeon's an actor. <laughs> but Gus Dudgeon... This is to me the Elton's voice in this mix is like perfect with the strings. I don't know if there's a better mixed album than this album. It just sounds uh, perfect how the strings and the voice connect in this one, and that's that's my number one. Very nice. Well, I got I've got the sleeper song as number one. Holiday Inn. It's a great song. Um, I, I love this song and it's one of those that it wasn't my number one two years ago yeah um, the, i love the mandolin from mm -hmm. davy johnston it's just gorgeous i love how it's kind of a, a long outro yeah. with the whole you know doo -doo 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 -doo. it's almost like uh it's almost it almost sounds like renaissance well not renaissance era but like you can, it's almost like you know the harpsichord sound and everything <laughs> sounds it sounds old it sounds like it shouldn't have been written in the 70s yeah um i i love how he says um like randy i mentioned this the line you know that one soon acquires he, he holds the line acquires like he's a southerner he's like one soon acquires he kind of holds that <laughs> r it says it kind of harder than an englishman where he would say acquires you know yeah um and i know I, i've talked to this about my dad again he's a big, big elton fan and um people used to talk about you know why Elton doesn't sing with a British accent a lot of the times. And, you know, it's because he was listening to Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard growing up the fifties, you know, hot commodities on the piano. So Elton took that and ran with it and still kind of does. I mean, he's probably taken on more English in his music since he first started those first 10 years, but holiday. And it's just, a, it's a great piece of what life was like on the roads. Um, and Elton talks about in the box set that when he's giving a uh, kind of a synopsis of what it's about, he's explaining to the British audience, you know, he, he's, uh, every few miles in America, there's a holiday in. And because that wasn't a brand that people knew at the time, uh, that, that wasn't a famous, as famous as, as it is now. So he was explaining to the British crowd, he's like, America has this chain of hotels called Holiday Inns and they're right. everywhere. And um, 
it, 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 it shows you the monotony of the road and how it's not all glamour and how it's all the rooms are exactly the same. And I, I love I, really the music in it is great, but I love Elton's voice, where especially when he hits, you know, like a motel, baby, on like a, like the holiday. Inn. It's just it's it's a great song. It's my favorite song on the album as of this moment. So number one, Holiday Inn. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Uh, my number one is Tiny Dancer. I couldn't get around it. That's one of my top three songs of Elton's career. The piano intro is fantastic. Uh, the sing-along quality, as you see in the movie, Almost Famous, is great. It paints a picture of the subject, as Randy documented with Blue Jean Baby, L.A. Lady, Seamstress for the Band, Pretty Eyed, Pirate Smile, You Marry a Music Man. Then Ballerina, You Must Have Seen Her Dancing in the Sand. Just great line after great line uh count the headlights on the highway you can see you know people do that they're counting the headlights on the highway when they're driving and people think this was a big hit when it came out it really wasn't it only hit number 41 on the charts it wasn't until almost famous gave it that boost in that movie that all of a sudden everybody oh my god i forgot how great that song was it's just an amazing song it's always been to me because i had the album and i i you know it's an undeniably great song. And in the movie, of course, it builds the camaraderie between the band and the roadies and the groupies and the manager. They're all one unit. And uh, it really, it, it, it's used effectively in that movie is what I'm trying to say. It's just a, a great song. Uh, I, I grant that it is overplayed, but a great song can never be too overplayed for me. That's just my own opinion. Fantastic song, and it uh, had to be my number one. Levon's close, though. Levon's a beauty. <laughs> They're like neck and neck. Yeah. Anyway, we get down to our ranking of the album. This is always interesting to see how high a level or where we put this on the pedestal. Of course, 10 being a perfect album, which I think we've only had one or two so far, uh, five being mediocre and one being just horrendous so randy you're first up where do you put this on the scale where do you rank it well i think i'm an easier ranker but uh since it's my favorite elton john album and he's had so many great albums i'm gonna have to give it a 10 because it, it's my favorite one of his and i think it's one of the best produced and sounding yeah. albums and with his, especially with his voice in this on this yeah. album that's honest what about you sam I'm going to give it a high ranking again because I've um, really grown to love this over the last few years. It's not an album that I grew up with, so it's not one that I've heard a million times necessarily. Um, like a lot of, you know, greatest hits or albums like, um, like certain Christmas albums or like even like Full Moon Fever by Tom Petty, I've heard a million times. But mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to give this album a nine and a half. Which is high for me. That's very Again, high. I've, kind of, I've got certain criteria for what makes an album a ten, and um, I would say that if Tiny Dancer was played less on the radio, it would be a ten for me. But it's not Elton's fault. No, I mean he's making he's making big bucks, but yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, it's 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 a near perfect. It it really is a perfect album, but I'm I'm being a little hard on it. But it's a nine and a half for me. Yeah, I'm going to be as fair as I can with it um, based on what I've ranked other albums in the series. I'm going to give it an eight and a half. It's between very good and excellent to me. So that's where I'm going to land. I, I like every song on the album, but there's three masterpieces on the album for me and uh, probably three real good songs and three that are not as good so eight and a half which is a solid yeah. score it's a real, really good album and yeah. uh, my my fault or my problem is i haven't listened to it in full as much as i should have through the years uh my albums got put away and for some reason i, I just wasn't playing them like i should have but when i went back and revisited it really good Anybody out there that hasn't listened to uh, this album and all the early Elton John albums, they're all terrific. Check them out. 
there's not a bad one in the bunch. Now they're really well worth uh, taking the time for 35, 40, 45 minutes, whatever they are, and and play them in full, front to back. I think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of them and, and really see why Elton John was the king of, of 70s music in a lot of ways. Definitely a lot more than just the greatest hits. Uh, for sure. Absolutely. The deep cuts are fantastic. Yeah, a lot of his, uh, I mean, he has innumerable hits, but a lot of his best songs were not hits. Oh, yeah, like Madman or Indian Sunset. Those are just fantastic yeah. songs that aren't ever on the radio. And that applies to Tumbleweed Connection and all the albums in that era. You can say that about all. They have gems in them, hidden somewhere within them. So anyway, it was uh, really fun. Thanks a lot, Randy, for join, jumping on and doing this with us. We always appreciate that. Check out Randall Nelson's channel. It'll be listed in the uh, description below. Same with Sam St. John uh, running the contest now. Name is Band with Glenn Kellaway. Uh, that's a fun uh, contest he's running. And we want to get Sam up to 500 subs. So if you're not subscribed to Sam, please do so. Uh, for Randy and Sam, this is Rich. We'll see you next time in our series. Thanks for watching and leave those comments. Take care. Bye.